Tonight's headlines are brought to you by McDonald's. Tonight on the Channel 2 News, two Korean tourists get in serious over the reef trouble at Ojeon Beach. One is rescued and safe, the other is taken to the hospital in an ambulance in condition currently unknown. Also tonight, a GoFundMe page is set up for two Saipan men who are involved in what appears to be a fatal spearfishing accident on the north shore of Oahu. And a new film, Oppenheimer, opens on Saipan and around the world. We take a look back at an interview with the pilot who brought Oppenheim's creation. In sports, the Saipan Fishing Derby is an event that is super local and super cool. You want to catch this. Stay with us. These stories and more are next. McCrispy, formerly known as the Crispy Chicken Sandwich, now has some respect on his name. Ba da ba ba ba. Real talk. The Spicy Crispy Chicken Sandwich should have been named Spicy McCrispy from Jump. Ba da ba ba ba. Korean tourist was transported to the Commonwealth Health Center this afternoon after an over-the-reef rescue at Objon Beach. Details are still coming in. Witnesses say a Korean family of four, two adults and two children, were at Objon Beach and drove themselves there in this rental car to go and do some snorkeling. Water conditions rough today. There is a sign posted. The two adults either went snorkeling over the reef or were swept out over the reef. The kids described as pre-teenagers were able to call for assistance after realizing the gravity of the situation. Glenn Policair was in the area and told KSPN 2 News this afternoon that the woman was able to get back on the reef and was rescued by a Saipan resident who was able to get her to shore. We're told the same man then returned, went out over the reef and helped to rescue the Korean man who was out there fighting waves and current for some time. EMS personnel were able to get him into an ambulance and transported to CHC. He was described as being semi-conscious. We will update you with more information on this story as it becomes available. A GoFundMe page has been set up to help with funeral expenses of two men from Saipan who died two days ago on the north shore of Oahu. Authorities still don't know quite what happened to two free divers who were originally from Saipan. Their bodies were recovered from Velzeland Beach, which is near Sunset Beach up on the North Shore. 32-year-old Raymond Tadella and 28-year-old Rupert Babauta were recovered after Honolulu Fire Department responded to a 911 call. Honolulu firefighters saw a submerged light about 150 feet offshore and noticed it wasn't moving. They retrieved one of the men and he was unresponsive and then continued their search and later recovered a second diver a couple of hours later. The two men reportedly dove together often, but reports say this was their first time to fish in this location. Raymond's wife, Mercelin, told KITV he was a gentle soul who loved goofing around, fishing, and making GoPro videos. And she says that Rupert Bado wanted to be a police officer. Rupert was 28, Raymond 32. As of this afternoon, a GoFundMe account had raised approximately $17,000 towards a $25,000 goal. No foul play is suspected. The men were experienced fishermen who worked together at an auto dealership on Oahu. HPD has launched an investigation and an autopsy will be performed on both of the men. Again, our thoughts and prayers go out to the families. 
It was standing room only at the Saipan Fishing Derby Banquet on Monday night. This is really a four-day tournament. Friday is getting ready day, Saturday is fishing day, Sunday is fishing day, and Monday is banquet day. There were over 90 boats registered for this year's tournament. Biggest Marlin came in late Sunday afternoon, just 20 minutes before the 6 p.m. cutoff at Smiling Cove Marina. It was caught out at 300 Reef. At least that's what we were told. Fishing spots are kind of like surfing spots. You don't always get just the right information. But the banquet spot was clear, and about 500 people used their GPS to get them to the Kensington Resort, where there was a buffet of bait for the schools of people. Man, if only the fish were lined up to sample the lures like this food line. Curtis Danko was the MC, and he was doling out the one-liners all night as he presented the awards to captain and crew. Awards were announced in a number of categories, including marlin, wahoo, mahi-mahi, and katsu. Not as many fish caught this year as in years past, but a great day on the water at one of the best events that happens on Saipan. The tournament went to a one-day format during COVID, but organizers say that won't happen again. It's back to two days, and it's going to stay that way, and the 40th version scheduled for next summer should be better than ever. Lots of raffle prizes given away. The grand prize, this reel, that costs about the same as three round-trip tickets to Guam, and as you know, that's a lot of money these days. The 39th annual Saipan Fishing Derby. If you ain't first, you're last. But that's not a bad place to be when you get to live and fish in the Mariana Islands. Chris Nelson for the Channel 2 News. Christopher Nolan's new blockbuster Oppenheimer is now in theaters in Saipan and around the world. In 1942, physicist J. Robert Oppenheimer was appointed to work on the top-secret Manhattan Project. He and his team spent years on it in a top-secret lab in New Mexico. First nuclear test happened in July of 1945, and in August of 1945, Colonel Paul Tibbets took off from Tinian and dropped an atomic bomb on Hiroshima, Japan. Tibbets was 29 and told me back in 2004 that their original mission, the one they trained for for a year, included dropping two bombs at the same time, one on Germany and one on Japan. I don't know who told you that. The, big, the mission was secret. But they told me in the middle of September, I don't know the date, I don't remember. They told me in the middle of September that I would organize and train the unit to employ those bombs in Europe and Japan simultaneously. Simultaneously. That I would be self-supporting. They gave me the boundaries. The details I had to work out. Which was, to me, it, was, it, might, have been a, it might have been a different type of bomb as far as explosive but it was still something to drop from an airplane I knew the airplanes I knew the bombing sequence I knew the whole damn thing so it was duck soup and who whose final call was it on who flew the first mission me because when I got the job they told me you are responsible nobody can tell you what to do because nobody knows what to do we're trusting based on your record we're trusting that you know what to do was being, knowing that this was going to be a historical thing, was that important to you at all? No. What, what, was, what was important to me, I knew it was going to be a success. We were going to stop the killing. Dutch Van Kirk was the navigator on the historic mission to Hiroshima. He got the plane there just 12 seconds later than planned, and he says he's heard about those 12 seconds for 60 years. He said that after the bomb was dropped, they had six or seven hours to discuss the mission on the way back to Tinian. I think the predominant uh, thinking on the airplane was, well, first we were uh, pleased that the mission had gone so well. Because our mission was practically a uh, picture-perfect mission. And if it had gone well, we had dropped the bomb, uh, we had hit the target, uh, and everything worked, so that was... Uh, good news for us. And then secondly, I think we were thoroughly convinced, and we had some discussion about this, we were really convinced that this was going to shorten and end the war because we did not see how the Japanese could continue uh, uh, resistance uh, with this type of weapon. Van Kirk says that he had no idea back then that he would even be alive in 60 years, much less be back on Tinian. And uh, I just want to say to the whole world, I've had a very good life in this sort of thing, and uh, I'm a very grateful for it, but uh, 
I honestly don't think I did anything that the other 16 million men in uniform didn't do. They all did their part, and if we hadn't done their part, why, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have had the result that we had. One of the best addresses in Saipan has office space available now, right in the heart of things. The Marianas Business Plaza offers reasonable rates and can help build to suit your needs. You'll love the central location, just 15 minutes from the airport and 10 minutes from Garapan. Ample and covered parking keeps your vehicle close and protected. Two restaurants for easy access, lunch, dinner and business meetings. Building security and 24-hour access to your office backup generators so you can run your business in all weather and three elevators mean easy and convenient access it's the address in Saipan the Marianas Business Plaza get your goods here with care and attention with Micronesia Air Cargo Services Max is all about connections daily flights to and from Guam four times a week to Rota and bi-weekly flights to Tinian. We are connecting the Marianas. Perishable goods, Home Depot furniture and appliances, even live animals operating since 2013. Check out our Thursday special to Rota from Guam and Saipan. Call Max at 670-288-6227. If it fits, we'll take it. NM Tech launches new curriculum aimed at the cosmetology industry. I'm Jodina Atal. I'm the CEO for NM Tech. Atal says school starts on August 7th and registration is ongoing. So cosmetology was actually one of the, the top five needs within the CNMI on the employment services data. And so we've decided that we already offer culinary, which is top four, and other construction trades. So with cosmetology, we're actually hitting our top fifth. So this is our way of, you know, trying to increase awareness. It's just exciting and a relief to finally be at this stage where we have the curriculum, we have the students enrolled, and we're getting ready to actually start the teaching. Kurt Ellis will be the main instructor for NM Tech. He's also the salon manager at Salton Barber. He says he's been doing hair for about eight years. The first part of this course is going to be a very basic, condensed uh, idea of cosmetology. So they're going to learn how to do how to cut hair, style hair. They'll learn the basics of color formulation and color application. But we're going to try, and also the basics in uh, nail and uh, aesthetics and facial things of that nature. And we're going to try to create a second course that's going to be the more advanced uh, highlights and uh, gel extensions, eyelash extensions. Welcome to Tea Galleria. The Mary Honest Experience continues inside the Tea Galleria Shopping Center. Welcome to the CNMI. Experience currently happens on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. My name is Divya Nelindo Bung Tamarso Tadella. Tadella is a cultural dancer who performs. In this center, we basically <laughs> try to bring awareness to the Chamorran Carolinian culture, and for me, I do Chamorro dancing. DFS is contributing the space for the exhibit, and the Marianas Visitors Authority is helping to fund the program. I think it's great because it shows outsiders who aren't from here, they get a glimpse of how us Chamorro Carolinians are and I think it's really nice. The dancing happens in the late afternoon and early evening.
tourists are encouraged to dance along. These young women learned how to make rings and they were trying to make theirs the best or at least the biggest. Yeah! <laughs> That's wow. 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 <laughs> and there's more culture and some of it blows. What's better than showing off a skill? Well, teaching it to someone else. <laughs> it is harder than it looks. But these visitors from Korea said they had a great visit. It was really amazing having um, island and grotto and the cliffs. Every cliffs I can see, the past ocean, it was really great for me. And for him, it was an amazing experience. And yesterday, in our diligent talent search, we may have found someone who's going to knock your socks off. This eight-year-old might just have the secret sauce. Let's take a listen. Oh. Talent agents, just remember, we found him first. Dad says it was a good trip, despite the rain. It was amazing. I mean, the weather was not too good uh, compared to sunny days, but then, you know, everything was fine. Uh, Swimming water, the nature itself was amazing and beautiful, so, you know, we enjoyed it. Since the Marianas Experience operates inside, it goes on rain or shine, and everyone is welcome. Then I got this and just got to try some of the other cultural stuff, so it was great. I mean, you know, people were nice here, so thanks for your hospitality. Need a new phone? Trade in now and get up to $500 off our best 5G devices. Trade in your older phone in any condition and step up to better savings and speeds only our 5G network can provide. Check out our website and catch up on the best mobile experience. Trade in now. Docomo Pacific, better together. Green sea turtles and hawksbill turtles call the Mariana Islands home. They're an important part of the marine ecosystem. They are under threat and they are protected under CNMI law. Keep plastic out of the ocean. Keep vehicles off the beach. Use the sea turtle stranding hotline if you see poaching activities or if you see a turtle in trouble. Call 287-8537 and save a turtle. Premium office space is available now at the Hermosa Vista Business Park on Capitol Hill. Features include dedicated parking, fast internet, backup power, good water, and natural light throughout to go along with the very best views on Saipan. So don't settle for space when you can get peace and peace of mind. Call Hermosa Vista today at 670-483-4750 or email hvsaipan at gmail.com. Hey, golfers, come north and practice your game at the Marianas Driving Range, New Year's 
local specials. 10-piece coupon books available for just $60. That's a $10 savings. Want to get really good? Come work on your swing every day for just $99 per month. It's our practice pass and you're going to love it. Grab your passes and go straight to the range. You can social distance and chip all at the same time and the views are free. Reserve now at MarianasTrekking.com. You can pay online, open seven days a week. Point of sports, sports fans. fans. It's always nice to, to, to catch fish when you're in the tournament. And we were just you know, really um, praying and asking the Lord to really help us find the fish. And, and it was on our way in, because all day we, we had a real big strike earlier, but, but that thing came up. But on the way in, we hooked this one in. The Saipan Derby is one of the most, to me, the most prestigious derby in this, in this region. So, so that's why us Guam people will, We'll, we'll, we'll go out of our way just to come here and participate because the association, the fishing association in this place is the best, is outstanding. We lost a big one yesterday. We tried to catch it back again, we couldn't. Um, so we went out there and we told ourselves like we're looking for that big one. Nothing hit all day until the 2.30, almost three o'clock. We got lucky with this and that was it. I've been at it for ooh, almost 20 years. Yeah, since I was five years old, my dad started taking me fishing, and and I can't get away from it. Well, it was a great event this year. The, the weather was good, uh, the fish were biting, and uh, we enjoyed 91 part registered participants from uh, 
all over the area from Guam, uh, people from Japan, Palau, Micronesia coming in and, and being part of this event. So we've really, really enjoyed the outcome of everyone. It was been real positive. It's been very competitive for the last two days. And uh, we're, we're seeing some, uh, some amazing stories. Tropical disturbance in western Micronesia will drift to the northwest in the coming days, likely passing between Yap and Guam. The disturbance expected to bring hazardous winds and seas for Guam and Rota waters through Friday. A small craft advisory is in effect for Rota and Guam. Inexperienced mariners, especially those operating smaller vessels, should avoid navigating in these conditions. On Saipan, southeast winds of 15 to 20 knots, wind waves are three feet, east swell six to seven feet, and west swell three feet, scattered showers and isolated thunderstorms. Expect more of the same tomorrow. Southeast winds 15 to 20 knots, wind waves three to four feet, southwest swell seven feet, and east three feet. Chance of showers and slight chance of thunderstorms on Friday.